in the late 90s, uh, a wonderful thing happened. And what happened was we came out with a, a product called a switch. Ah, switches are wonderful things. Hubs. If you have a hub, eh, don't use it, okay? It's just really bad news and it's not very good and it's old technology and it slows down your network. But with a switch, and they look the same. A switch looks like a hub. Um, you know, and you got to make sure that when you're looking at it that you're not dealing with a hub. I don't think they even sell hubs anymore, but they're still around. And when people put them in their network, it's going to slow down your network. So we use switches. So with a switch, a switch is intelligent and it learns. And so when this guy here sends a message, the switch learns this and puts it in its CAM memory. So it knows the MAC address. Remember, switches and all at this level, they're dealing with MAC addresses. They may be requesting IP, well, they are requesting IP addresses, but they're really talking in the MAC language. Um, uh, you know, they're using that 48-bit um, address that's burned in on every single NIC card. And so what happens is, is the switch learns this address. So it learns the address for PC1, not quite the other PCs yet, but it's learning it. So it learns PC1. And let's say PC1 is sending out information to PC3. Uh, what did I do here? 3, 4. Sending out information to PC4. Now, if the switch doesn't know the MAC address for PC3, um, uh, then, then what it does is it uh, sends that message out. And that's called a broadcast message. So this switch wants to talk to, or this PC1 wants to talk to 3, it's going to send a message. And that message is going to be, I'm looking for PC3. So where are you PC3? Well, at this point the switch doesn't know who PC3 is, so it does, like a little, it does act like a hub here. And it sends the message out to everybody that it knows. And now what happens is, is it waits. No one responds but PC3 responds. So now it learns and switches learn these MAC addresses at this layer. And so what happens is it now knows two. So once it knows two and one is sending a message again to two, it will only send a message to two. It will only send it here to two. So, oh, I'm sorry, to three. It will only send a message to three. So. Uh, it learns. So these people out here are completely isolated from that message. And in fact, at the same time, if they're sending messages, it will learn about, um, you know, two, it will learn about three, it will learn about four. So all these will, will be learned. So when four sends to two, uh, the switch will know where it's at. If uh, uh, three sends to four, it will know how to send it. So it treats each one completely separately, which means you get a tremendous bandwidth increase. And on top of that, you, you don't have the collisions. There's no more collisions in, in this case. So you have not single directional like you do with a walkie-talkie, but now you have uh, bi-directional. You know, it's almost at this point, it's like a telephone system. You know how you can pick up a phone and you can dial someone and um, you can talk to that person. Uh, but in, that, in the same office, uh, other people could be talking on the phone to different individuals, yet you don't hear what they're saying, they don't hear what you're saying, and it doesn't interfere with what you're saying. So the difference between a hub is like a, a two-way radio, and a, different, and, and a switch is like uh, a telephone system, a modern telephone system. So think of it that way, how, how a modern telephone system isolates all the conversations. but a, uh, a two-way radio doesn't. And that's what's happening in a switch. And it does it by learning the MAC addresses of all the devices that are attached to it, including your printer, your server, all the, uh, uh, all the PCs, things like that. And that's why switches are superior. Now, you know, there's different levels. Uh, 10 base T, mm, that's kind of old. It's a long time since uh, I've even see, uh, seen 10 base T out there, our, our Cat 3, Category 3 cable. Um, at one point, Category 3 cable, boy, that was really expensive cable. That was a great cable. And we only used it for computers. And then it got pretty inexpensive. So when I would send out my technicians uh, to, um, 
Uh, when I would send out my technicians to cable building because CAT 3 got so inexpensive, I let them use CAT 3 for the telephone system also. That was long before voice over IP. But uh, as, as manufacturing got better and the technology got better, uh, what happened is we went through other, to other categories. We went to category 5. And tell you the truth, category 5 did not last that long, it, but it was a, a step above category 3. See, they go up. So uh, category three and then, then five, I don't know what happened to four, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't think I even bought a, a category four cable. And I don't know what one or two was. Uh, you know, possibly years ago, there was a cable co called, uh, what was the name of that cable? Quad cable. It's called quad cable, it had solid colors. And you might have this in your home. It, it was um, uh, green and red, and then it was, um, I always remember this because it had uh, Christmas colors for the first pair, green and red, and the second pair were Halloween colors. It was yellow and black. And sometimes when you open up a jack at home, if your home is over 15, 20 years old, you'll see that cable, um, you know, the, uh, the four different colors. So, uh, but as time moved on, we went on to category five. It didn't really last that long. Then we went to category 5E, and that was enhanced Cat 5E. And that's pretty much what people are using today in, in 2015. And we're also using Category 6, um, which is also a, a cable that has more capabilities that pass more uh, data uh, through it from one end to the other um, uh, without uh, deteriorating uh, the signal. And one of the ways it does it is it does by twisting the cable. Um, not the whole cable twisted, but individual pairs. And if you look real close, individual pairs are twisted at different, uh, what would you say, different twists per foot. So if you're looking at Cat 5E, um, there's less twists in it than Category 6. And so when you lift up Category 5E box of cable, it'll weigh, you know, what it normally weighs. I forget the, the pounds, you can weigh it yourself. But when you lift up Cat 6, you can feel the difference because more twists in the cable means more copper per foot, and it's a heavier cable. So it's a heavier cable. But at the same time, you also went from 10 base T, remember cat, category three, 10 base T. You went to 100 uh, base T, which is uh, uh, fast ethernet. And uh, that's pretty much um, yeah, the general standard today. Most people have 100 base T. Uh, and then of course you go to 1000 base T, one gigabit cable, and you can do that with cat six. Uh, you can do that with Cat 5e for short distances also. Um, and then some people, I've heard people say, well, I want fiber to desktop. Um, not very practical to put fiber to the desktop. And it's not that fiber is difficult to put in. It's uh, because it isn't. Uh, we've been doing fiber for years. It's not that difficult. You have the, uh, the tools, uh, the testing equipment or anything else. It's not difficult at all. It's just very impractical. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. And to tell you the truth, 100 megs to the, uh, to the desktop this year, <laughs> of course, if you're watching this five years from now, you might be laughing at me on this, is quite sufficient for just about anything you want to do. Um, the, the bottleneck in most um, networks today, local area networks, LAN networks, is when they try to exit the LAN and go on to the internet. And usually their internet connection is a lot slower than their average connection from the, the switch uh, to the PC. Um, but at the same time, uh, they're getting better and better, and we have uh, uh, CAT7 uh, coming out. Um, uh, 6A is augmented, so, uh, um, and there's different standards for it. You have to be able to, your switch has to be able to, to work in the, the gigabit range and things like that, and cabling. So you have to not only the cabling, but your switch has to be able to work in that gigabit range. Um, now let's finish out the local area network uh, because what's always, I mean, what's a local area network? You can't get to the internet these days. So there's a little symbol, it usually looks like that and that's your router. And sometimes the symbol looks like this where it has the arrows going in and out. And a lot of times when you're setting up your computer it asks for IP addresses and subnet and it's asking for gateway. This is another name for a router. And of course the router goes to the 
the mysterious cloud in the sky called the internet. It's not really, obviously some people actually think it's a cloud. It's not. It's just another bunch of routers and switches and, and websites that are attached to them. Uh, but it's called the cloud, so it's easier to say cloud. So this is how the whole system fits together. And, and at the switch level, at the switch level, and up to this part of the router, it uses MAC addresses, and it uses what's called layer two addresses. And then the router deals with IP addresses. And that doesn't mean these, these guys out here don't have IP addresses, they sure do. And it's used in the system, but the switch is interested in MAC addresses, the router is interested in IP addresses. You know, where you're going to have your bottleneck most likely is going to be that connection here uh, from your router to the, uh, the cloud. And, um, uh, but a lot of times people say, well, my computer seems so slow and everything else. That just might be your computer. Uh, if the cable's put in correctly and it's tested and everything else, it just may be your computer. You might have a virus on there, it might be a worm or something else. And we're going to discuss those things later on in our uh, uh, other videos. We're going to talk about uh, cyber security and about viruses and worms and, and how to detect them and why they're important to know about. And it just may, you know what's amazing? <laughs> You get a computer, you turn it on, and man, that thing is lightning fast, it's beautiful, it's perfect, everything else. And then two years later, it's like slow, slow. And I wonder, is it the computer or is it just our perception of the computer? We're so used to things getting faster, 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 and, and also cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. It's getting to the point to where, um, you know, you replace laptops every three to four years and desktops. Man, if you have a desktop that's over five years, you got an old desktop. So. Uh, you know, just that's just the way things are going, getting less and less and less. Hi, this is Jim with Cablesupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from Cablesupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with Cablesupply.com, and today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. This is David, signing out. You stay classy, Internet. <laughs>